the conversation I'd like to have with you now is my choice to be my loving self. And remember, the previous one we had this morning was the choice to develop my loving self. And this one's more about, like, what are you going to choose to be right now? What are you going to choose to do right now? Development requires a process that is engaged over time. Being requires you to change some of the ways in which you use your will immediately, if you can. Now, of course, that's not always going to be possible because there's, you know, these things have to be worked through, but even being some of these things is going to help you work through them by being them rather than, rather than just skipping over them, living in the facade of them. So we want to examine what, what we need to do to be our loving selves in a, on a daily basis. The first thing I'd like to raise with you is the issue of your priorities. What are your priorities? Remember these are will-based priorities. These are not willpower-based priorities. And remember, we said this morning in, a, in, in the first group we had this morning that, and the choice to develop my loving self, we talked about the difference between the willpower being exercised and the will being exercised. And frequently, the will being exercised is about undoing things rather than doing things. Does that make sense? And particularly when it comes to the aspect of sin and all of its subsequent results. It's, it's a lot about undoing things. So as you can see with my priorities, um, if, we're not, if we don't have these priorities, I'm not suggesting to you to use your willpower to create them. What I'm suggesting to you is to change some of these things that are going on and some of the things from your real self so that, so that you can develop these priorities over a period of time so that, so that when we come to our next group or a few groups after that you're actually in a stage where you are being your, your loving self rather than just hoping to be. Right? So the first priority, priority number one, relationship with God. And in fact we could just write it as God is my number one priority, couldn't we? <coughs> If God is not your number one priority on a daily basis, you will not progress anywhere near as rapidly as you could progress if God was your number one priority. And if God is your number one priority, you will be drawn into addressing what sin creates and sin itself, the desire to sin itself. You'll be drawn into addressing it. You won't, you won't only address these things because you're in pain. You'll address them because it's the right thing to do. It's the truthful thing to do. It's the best thing to do, not only for you, but for everyone around you as well. You see, most of the time we have a very selfish perspective. We're only interested in our own happiness. We're not that concerned about the happiness of others. And, and when you have God as your priority, well, God's concerned about the happiness of everyone, everyone's happiness equally. So God's, God's not going to help you sacrifice another person's happiness for the sake of your own. Right. So this is why, another reason why God as your number one priority will draw you through everything, what, everything you need to address and deal with. Number two priority, yourself. And by yourself I mean not just yourself but the other half of yourself. <laughs> So many of you have placed a priority, uh, for many of you, your priorities are self and then self and then, oh, yourself <laughs> and then, oh, yeah, self too. <laughs> that's, you know, that's your priority, you know, and that, and that priority is always going to end up with a deep level of unhappiness for self but also for others. And by self there, you really are doing half self. <laughs> That, that's really your priority, right? And what I'm suggesting here is your priority needs to change so that you're concerned about not only yourself but the other half of yourself. So, so what happens if the other half of yourself is in a worse condition than you are? They know less than you do about truth. Can you see that they are very dependent upon 
you doing something for their, for their sake as well as your own. Do you see what I'm saying? Which is all really just for your own sake in the end, but they've depended upon that right? as a part of their progression. So it helps you be less selfish, ironically, when you're fully so focused on your full self. Because for the majority of people, full self only means one individual, but I'm talking about full self meaning two people, you and the other half of you. And for most people, you know, as soon as they've got to consider another person, they automatically have to start looking at their own selfishness. So that's a, it's a great thing that God's designed to help us address issues of personal selfishness. So self, very important. That is a priority. Now, like we can talk about how we make God a priority, and how do we do that? We certainly don't do it by you know talking to God once or twice a day or not at all. We don't do it by by ignoring most of God's laws, do we? We'd have to engage them, would we? We have to want to know them. We don't do it by spending most of our time just playing or uh, playing with things without actually experiencing God in the process of play. So we don't do it by ignoring God. We do it by engaging God in a process. We talked about that in the previous talk, so we don't need to re-talk about that now. We just need to see that it needs to be a priority. It needs to be the first priority. And self needs to be the next, because without you changing self, you can't actually really properly love anybody, really. Right? And, and unless yourself becomes less selfish, then it's highly unlikely that you'll be able to love the environment, anybody else or God. So we, we need to develop ourselves. It's not actually, we're not talking about a selfish development of self here. We're talking about the development of self to get to God's condition of what is love and truth. And that means that we're going to have to become more selfless than we currently are for the majority of us. That's what it's going to mean. Right. Very important to put that next. You can't also um, put others before yourself, I've found, because in the end you can't help anybody else unless you've helped yourself first. You know, a lot of people ask me, why is it that I'm not healing other people? Right? Yet. And the, and the answer is quite simple, because I haven't healed myself yet. It would be both wrong and hypocritical to try or attempt to heal others while at the same time ignoring development of myself. Right? And we, are, we often see this in a relationship where, where you want the other person to change first. Right? And, and that's not what God's asking you to do. God's asking you to change first. If you change first, then other people can be assisted to change. Right? So that's why it needs to happen that we, we actually learn to place as a priority loving self. See, this is about loving God. This is about loving self. And then the third priority is loving others. Dealing with issues that prevent us from loving others. Now, when you start looking at the facade and you accept your facade, you, you get to this point, point where you see quite clearly, wow, these are all the things I do where I don't love myself. And quite often it's complete reversal of what you thought before that. You know, you thought you weren't loving yourself when you actually were, and you thought you weren't, were loving yourself when you actually weren't, you know, and, and you see that in the end. And the same applies with others. You quite often frequently um, think that others are not loving you when they actually are. And quite often you think that others are loving you when they're actually not. And all of that needs to be reversed. But unless we deal with these issues with regard to our love of others as a priority, we're never going to address them. Because once we've dealt with self, we think, oh, everything's fixed and it's not going to be fixed. And in fact, a relationship with God is not actually fully possible unless you address your love of others. Ironically, also, your love of God is not actually completed until you also addressed your love of everything else, really, which is, let's call it, the environment. And many, many of you have some severe problems with that. It's very low priority in your life, much, much lower than number four, where 
you, you're not caring of the environment, you even hardly consider it. You see your environment as something that serves you and therefore you should be able to abuse it at any time and not worry about it and you certainly have very, very little desire to fix it for many of you. You rave on about others not doing others doing damage to it, but you do not much at all personally to fix it. And these are part of your priorities if you love. So you love God first, you love yourself next, take action to love yourself next, you love others, and then you love your environment. And none of these loves are actually exclusive. They're not mutually exclusive, they are mutually inclusive. In other words, I can't love God unless I love the environment. I can't love God unless I love others. I can't love God unless I love myself. That's the beauty of this priority system is that each of the list things in the priority will draw you to this uh, way in which you love, which is like universal. It affects everything you do rather than just a few things you do. So that's very powerful, looking at your priorities. And remember, if you, if you notice that your priorities are out of line to that, you know, it's like I said here, self, self, self and self, um, then instead of trying to use your willpower to change that, you need to address the underlying reasons why it's like that. Does that make sense? Allow yourself to see what the motivations are for it to be to, to ignore God or ignore self or ignore others. What are what is the underlying addictions in place? And you know you need to let yourself examine those things and feel about those things so that your will can change. So don't try changing these things with your willpower. Look at your priorities honestly. Ask yourself whether they, they are the priorities in your life or not. And if they're not, change them, but change them using the techniques we've discussed with you, going through the emotional reasons why they're not like that. Developing even an aspiration to go through the emotional reasons why they're not is going to be better than doing nothing. Is there any questions about the priorities? Very simple priorities, I feel like. Very simple priorities. You have those priorities, you, you, it's very hard to go wrong with your development. Very hard. But as soon as you, let's say, let's say you focus on self first. So you put number two, and instead of being number two, you make it number one. The problem with that is when you are happy with you, you'll stop. You'll stop development. You stop even, you know, growing to be more loving. You stop because you'll be satisfied with what you are. But it doesn't mean that that it's the it's the best you can be, and it doesn't mean that other people will be happy with it, and it doesn't mean your environment is going to be very happy about it. It just means that you are. So that's the, that's the flaw. If we just focus on self, if we just focus on others, very similar. Once others are happy, we stop. If we focus on the environment, which is really hard to do, <laughs> you know, and just focus on that, if you just focus on that, you're never going to be happy. <laughs> you know why? Because other people will destroy the environment that you have tried to create in a more loving space and you'll always be disappointed. In addition to that, you, through your unknown unloving actions towards yourself and others, will probably also affect the environment and, and therefore you're sort of working against yourself. So no, any other priority than those priority systems, that priority system is, has got all sorts of logical problems with it. All right. So are my priorities. Now let's examine my choices. <laughs> <laughs>